Welcome to a special edition of Buckeye Bar Guys here on Buckeye Bar Talk uh, Network. Um, we're doing a special Labor Day weekend. The Buckeyes should be playing this weekend. Uh, special. Um, we're going to have a little extra fun uh, this weekend with this show. Um, this is, uh, I know there's been a lot of uh, kind of depressing, sad news that we've been reporting over the first couple of weeks with just all the craziness that this cancellation of this fall season has been. So, um, we decided to kind of do a little bit of a different show. Um, so, uh, we still have episode four upcoming, um, which we'll get kind of back into our original format. Um, but you know, on tonight's, uh, episode, um, we're going to do, uh, kind of a best of 20, uh, 2012 to present day. Um, so best of favorite of, we picked 12 questions. Um, we'll have to figure out who's going to go first or second. Um, we were going to do a coin flip. Um, um, we'll so do rock, paper, scissors. Rock, paper, scissors works. Uh, Best out of one. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, basically the first 12 questions are just and uh, no duplicate answers. So it's going to be like, you know, who's the best quarterback? What was your favorite touchdown? Stuff like that. And then we each have an answer and we'll give it. So one of us will take the odd questions first. One of us will take the even questions first. Um, and then the last two questions are just kind of a... Uh, we don't have to necessarily have two different answers. Those will be questions 13 and 14. Just kind of fun little. More more so like an open discussion for those. Yeah. So how's everything going today, John? Good. Good. I'm good. So I'm ready to get into this. All right. So we're going to do the rock, paper, scissors to decide uh, who's going to win and choose if they're taking the first or second, the even or odd or even questions, who's going first on those. So. All right. Let's do it. So. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. 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 All right, you're up. All right, um, so I will well, take... I guess you can do... You can defer if you want to. <laughs> yeah. Um, go with it. I think I'm going to take a... I'm going to go first on the even question, so... All right, let's do it. You're going to be the, the first one to answer. Okay. All right. So, first question tonight. And remember, this is 2012 to present day. So, anything prior to 2012 does not count. Like Terrell prior? Yeah. No prior. <laughs> All right. So, who would you pick as the best quarterback? Well, favorite quarterback. Yeah. Fa so, yeah, favorite quarterback. Sorry. So... Um, obviously there's a lot of choices here. You can't really go wrong on any of them. I was kind of thinking back, I was like, JT, you know, Dwayne had that amazing year. Justin just did everything last year. I mean, I thought that Braxton, what did Braxton ever really do wrong? Like, he didn't throw a ton of interceptions. I know he didn't have the best arm out of all of them, but he was still a heck of a quarterback. Um, I'm going to kind of go with the man of mystery, though, that got us that national title. So I'm going to say Cardell Jones. He never lost a game. Uh, 12 gauge, you know, he had the he had that big arm on him. He was very hard to tackle. He took Landon Collins out of that uh, Alabama game a couple times. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, he was just a lot of fun to watch down the stretch of that national title run. Uh, I think, you know, if anybody – Maybe that was a little bit more equipped to deal with uh, like a strong arm passer came in as your offensive coordinator in 2015. I think Cardale could end up being more than what he was if he really had someone that could work with what his skill set was and could, you know, get him better for that. So it was a it's kind of a shame how it ended, um, but we'll always remember him for that magical 2014 run and and. Out of all these guys, he's the only one that's never lost a game at Ohio State. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, I love Cardell. Uh, I thought about uh, putting him on the, my list as well for obvious reason. I think Cardell will always hold a special place in the heart of all uh, Buckeye fans. Um, so, actually, both my choices are still here. So, let me just think about who I'm going to take. Um, I'm actually going to go with uh, I'm going to go with Haskins and. Reason why I chose Hacks, I actually, it was between, for me, both Haskins and Fields, and 
That's not to say anybody that came prior to them uh, was wrong in this choice. I mean, I love Braxton, what he did. Uh, I mean, everybody, I mean, a lot of people have called me a JT apologist and uh, especially, you know, a couple people in our family. So, uh, I, I mean, I love JT Barrett for everything he did. Um, he's a winner. Um, he's a leader. Um, the reason why I'm going with Haskins, uh, I mean, the guy has the records now. Uh, and, you know, maybe it been one season, but it was a hell of a season. And uh, he proved to me just how of a great of a quarterback he is. Um, and kind of the same thing with Fields, but... You know, I just, Justin's is a little bit more mysterious to me at this point. Um, Dwayne, I mean, the, I think Dwayne's biggest problem is sometimes they didn't run an offense for him. Um, you know, they, I think they, they, tried, they kept trying to run an offense that didn't suit him. Yeah, they tried to do, you know, that was probably Urban's biggest, uh, you know, I think shortcoming is that sometimes that he needed to, you know, who your quarterback is. You needed to, maybe adjust things up a little bit. Dwayne definitely falls even less in the mold than even Cardell. I mean, he's even less mobile. Even though he could do it, he could run when he had to. Yeah, we saw him run a couple times. Um, but I love Dwayne, and I think, uh, I mean, I fell in love with the guy the when he came in and beat Michigan in the fourth quarter of that game, so, in 17, so. Yeah. And he lit them up in the the revenge tour game of 18 so right <laughs> yeah uh dude should have had a chance in the playoffs I, I don't think the defense could have held up in those playoffs but uh the dude could uh score with anybody in the country so well, he should have been given a chance i think they honestly they could have they could have competed with alabama yeah i agree with that i think alabama's offense probably at the end of the day probably was too much that you know because they would have got a stop or two against Dwayne. And I don't know that the defense, I just didn't trust that 2018 defense. So I don't know at the end of the day if they could have ran with Alabama the whole time, but uh, they could have definitely competed with them. They would have started off better than what Oklahoma did in that game. I don't think anybody was being Clemson that year. With that entire defensive line coming back, they were just, I mean, those guys were crushers. So they were monsters. Yeah. All right. Question two. All right. Michael, favorite Ohio State assistant coach during this time? All right, so I had a lot. You have a lot of different choices, um, and this could be uh, assistant coaches or coordinators. Um, so I mean, you think about Tom Herman and Ryan Day, um, Brian Hartline in recent years. I really had him high on my list because I think he almost overnight changed a weakness in a coaching staff to a strength. Right. Um, Combs has been unbelievable, but I'm going with Larry Johnson. The dude's a winner. Uh, he uh, He's always been a great, uh, I mean, he's the best defensive line coach in college football. I don't care what anybody says. I don't even know if it's debatable. I mean, the talent that he got at Penn State, some of the top draft, high draft picks he had over there. And, you know, he didn't always get the top five-star kids. And now you see he's been, every year he gets a five-star defense end now at Ohio State. And he sure seems like it. He's turning these kids into, I mean, these kids that already have the talent, well, they're living up to their potential because of him. And, yeah. you know, he, these kids know how to bull rush. They know how to do different moves. I mean, they're unstoppable. I mean, Joey, Nick, uh, Chase. Uh, Chase, I mean, sorry. Uh, yeah, Chase. I mean, he's, all three of them is just like, who was better than the last? And sometimes you don't know. And, I mean, but look what he's done with the three and four star guys, too, that are playing in the NFL. Well, I mean, maybe my favorite defensive line on. Um, Ohio State was the the when, Rushman, the Rushman, the original Rushman. <laughs> when there was Hubbard and Bosa and uh, Lewis and uh, Holmes, right? Yes. I mean that's as Chase is the fifth. Yeah. I mean those guys, those guys were just in your face and ridiculous. And I mean, and then the defensive tackles, Michael Bennett and uh, um, Diesel and um, uh, Landers and. Uh, Oh, who was the, the big kid from last year? Dave on Hamilton. Yeah, Hamilton. I mean, these guys are all just, uh, I mean, they've just proven themselves, and they've been, uh, and I love Larry Johnson, the dude. I, I think the hard, the hardest day for a lot of Buckeye fans is the day he retires. Now, I don't think that uh, 
Ohio State will have a problem replacing him because they'll get a good coach, but it's not going to be the same caliber. The dude has got years and years and years of experience. That's fair. And, I I mean, I really like Larry, too, because, you know, wisdom. He does it. It's just stoic how he does it. It's not, he's not an in-your-face guy. I, I know he gets excited. I mean, I've seen Larry Johnson interact with his players, but he's not, he's not crazy. He's not out there ripping people apart. He's just he's teaching them the game he loves, and he does such a great job. I mean, as you mentioned, just – all those guys, there's just a, such a long list that he has worked with, and they're just amazing. Yeah, and I don't know the exact quote offhand anymore, um, but I just when Urban and the guys talked about after uh, the seven, or the yeah, seventeen Penn State game on that comeback when uh, he told everybody to just. Uh, sit back and let his boys go win the game for him after they came back. Yeah. I think uh, let my rushmen do what they're meant to yeah. So, uh, yeah. Uh, let them be unleashed and uh, they'll go and they, I mean, they single, I mean, it wasn't just JT's great performance in 17 in the fourth quarter. I mean, they shut Penn State down in the fourth. So, yes, they did. And like they just attacked them all the way up to the comeback until the point that they were in the lead, then they closed it out. Yes. Yeah. Now, he, he's one of the best, for sure, um, on the team. He's the best defensive line coach in the country. And that's a lot of the talking point with the top recruits, too. You always hear, you know, they, they like Alabama, um, you know, Nick Save and the history. Not that Ohio State doesn't have the history. Or they like the location of Clemson and what the team's been doing. But any of these top recruits that are on the defensive line, they're automatically, if Larry Johnson talks to them, they consider Ohio State. And they say that, I mean, being coached by Coach Jay is just, you know, that's, that's a top honor for that position. So um, he's a great one. So mine, you mentioned a couple of them that mine was included in there. So Larry was probably number one for me. And then two or three were kind of tied. Um, I'm going to go with Brian Hartline, though, just because, I mean, he's still young. I really, Kerry Combs, that was very close. I mean, that's Mr. Ball of energy there. <laughs> I'd love watching Kerry Combs on the sideline, how just juiced up he gets. And you know his players are loving that too. I still remember him when uh, Zeke breaks the touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> and he and he he obviously does a good job too. I mean, look at the guys that have gone to the NFL, which that's a question I think we're getting into a little bit later. Brian Hartline, though, um, you know, the guy before him, he's – I I really – I would like to say that that was always a point in Ohio State that they never really got – those five star receivers, and especially not all at once. You know, they might have got a really, really high rated wide receiver, but then they'd supplement it with a couple, two or three stars. I mean, two stars don't really come here. Um, but they they definitely underachieved in that time that they were just they ran simple routes that they could never get open, and you and you knew Ohio State got better athletes and what you were seeing on the field that how can't these guys get open and i mean paris campbell paris campbell can outrun anybody so that's yeah. outside of usain bolt he can pretty much beat anybody in a sprint so how wasn't he getting more open to make plays and he had some drops too but um brian hartland completely solidified that room with the guys that you know smith had before him they were performing a heck of a lot better they were making plays of course Dwayne haskins throwing to him helped a whole bunch um and then how he's recruited since then, man. Yeah. That guy, he is just, he is a killer on that recruiting path. He gets these five-star kids. I mean, two five-star receivers in one class, three five-star receivers in two years. Signed with Ohio State with two highly rated four-stars as well. I mean, that's that room is deep, as deep as any in the country for years to come. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited to get to see them more hopefully sooner rather than later but. i don't know what his ambitions are for life i mean that guy had a long career i enjoyed watching him as a player um you know hopefully he's not looking for an nfl offensive coordinator or nfl wide receiving coach gig because i don't see him leaving to go to another college I've always, of course i've always heard that uh i mean obviously you hear things that i mean that doesn't necessarily mean true it's always kind of coach speak but it seems like from listen to other uh Ohio State guys that have been in the program that are in media now. Um, it seems like he's happy. Um, the athletes are super competitive, though. He, and that doesn't leave. That's, yeah, he, I mean. He might want to prove he can do it at a different yeah. level. Um, you know, I mean, there could be, 
outside of getting uh, the head coaching job anytime soon, you know, there's still a possibility that, you know, he could get promoted up a little bit further. You know, you still got the offensive coordinators. I mean, there's going to be, there's always movement in the Ohio State coaching staff. So, you know, you, know, you never know. Right. All right, let's try to get through these a little quicker. All right. <laughs> All right, so uh, I'm kind of interested to see how you go on this one. Uh, so the third question is most hyped recruit. Um, I want to see how how you kind of took that, and then I'll tell you how I kind of took it. I didn't know at first how we were saying this, if it was like our favorite hype recruit who did the most with their time. Um, I don't, I mean, I don't know if you looked at the list. Ohio State's actually had a lot of, like, five-star players that really haven't done much with the program so yeah. i don't i don't know if you looked at the list like i did last night that was kind of where i was kind of thinking about this who was really hyped coming in but maybe didn't perform up to their standards and i think a lot of the five stars that we got it wasn't like oh my gosh this guy is going to that ended up you know doing what they were supposed to do they weren't hyped up to the points like oh these guys are going to be the difference between a national title or not so my most hyped player, and he had a solid career, but it was Dontre Wilson. That guy, I mean, he was supposed to be the Percy Harvin that anytime he touched the ball, he was going to get a touchdown. And just through realism and uh, injuries, you know, it just it never, it never amounted to that. So he was a good player, though. I mean, he made plays. He got touchdowns. But I was expecting this guy to be like you, you wouldn't be able to catch him if it, and it just it, it didn't happen so yeah uh definitely agree with that one because Dontre was definitely on my list as well um I don't know how many times over Urban's uh tenure we heard uh this is gonna fit the Pitt Percy Harvin uh role uh at Ohio State um but and you know looking back at it I'm not sure why the Percy Harvin role is so important at Ohio State yeah. I mean Percy, plus Percy Harvin's Percy Harvin. I mean, who was the Percy Harvin after Percy Harvin left for Urban at Florida? Right. right? And Percy Harvin ended up being a pretty good NFL wide receiver. Yeah. Um, but uh, definitely agree with that one. Like I said, he was on my list. Um, my guy, since I can't take Dontre, um, think about uh, 2014 national title team if uh, Joey Bosa was lined up on the other side of uh, Noah Spence. And because Noah Spence is my guy, that uh, that dude had, I mean, he was a five-star kid. 13, he was starting to get it, too. Yeah, he was just, I mean, and, you know, he got in some trouble. And when he got in trouble, he got booted and uh, just, I don't know, didn't uh, didn't work out. Uh, but hey, he still ended up doing all right. He went through the NFL. I think, uh, I mean, it's just one of those guys that, what could have been uh he could it, it could have went no expense of joey bosa nick bosa and uh the chase, chase young so, yeah like for real i i think uh noah was definitely had top five draft pick written all over him now if, 14 he, that's larry johnson's first year right yeah because rabel's there the two yeah could, so could you imagine if that one year if he had no expense yeah i mean what no expense would have learned yeah that would have been forget about that uh but you know, so yeah, that was who. That's who I would have went with. Okay. All right. Question four, Michael. Who is your favorite skilled player during this time? All right. So, uh, both of my guys are from the 2014 team, uh, but I'm gonna go with uh, we're 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 living in Stark County right now, so I'm gonna go with my uh, Stark County. Uh, Mass on Tiger, Devin. Uh, I think we had the same too. <laughs> Devin Smith. Uh, uh, dude was unbelievable. I loved him. Uh, caught everything. I mean, you know, when he dropped the ball, it was like something weird. Not only did he catch everything, he caught it in crazy fashion. And for touchdowns. Yeah, for touchdowns. I mean, that's some of the most ridiculous touchdowns imaginable over his tenure. Uh, and it was a gamer. I mean, he always showed up. Uh, even when he was, I mean, he was sick as hell in that national t championship game. He still had a still had a big catch. He had a big catch. He almost had a touchdown that they had to interfere on, and you know, so. yeah. I mean, that guy easily he could get himself in positions to get interfered on all the time. Just how he could jump in front of people. So, no, he was amazing. He was definitely uh, one of my top two as well. 
I went with, though, and I almost wore the number 15 over here, Ezekiel Elliott. Nothing will ever beat the uh, 2014 run. And he did it in 2015 as well. I mean, the guy, I think he only had one game that was under 100 yards, unfortunately. It was that Michigan State game. Um, but, yeah. I mean, there's really, what else What else can you say about Zeke's performance? He took that team on his back. I know they had a lot of pieces that really helped out in that national title run. But he ran all over all those teams. And there was nothing against Zeke for me. It's just, you know, I mean, like I said, I just. Kind of an easy answer, too. I just love Devin, um, just the stuff he did. And, I mean. Well, you couldn't guard him, and he caught everything yeah. for touchdowns. And, you know, and easily Michael Thomas could have been thrown in that list, too. Because, I mean, again, just another. Yeah. Unbelievable player. It was a great team. Alrighty. So we're all right, guys. So we're doing uh, our favorite fat man, favorite blind man. And we are not insulting anybody because look at us. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, this could be either offensive or defensive lineman. That's how so I think it. So it does not necessarily have to be a fat guy because if you notice, Ohio State's defensive line, they're pretty. They're in actually really good shape. Their offensive line is, too. I don't know why I'm acting like they're a bunch of, like, fat slobs out there. Like, I mean, football is such a scientific game anymore that you're not just looking at, like, huge bodies. You're not looking at just 400-pound men that are just plugging holes so you can't move around them. I mean, these guys are just efficient machines out there, um, just big ones. So my favorite lineman, though, I don't know what it was about him. is just uh, something said him Michael Bennett. He was just, he was my guy. That was that 2014 run. I mean, he, do, he did not look like the rest of the linemen out there. Not that he was, like, undersized or anything. It's just he, you never heard about him. Like, he was this presence that you could not block the guy, but that you could not block the guy. I mean, he was one of the best pass-rushing interior defensive linemen that I saw, and you just, you would not expect it from him. And he really changed that 2014 title run. He just, you could not block the guy. He had so many sacks down the stretch there. So he's my guy. He was always, you know, he's always been my favorite defensive lineman. Yeah. Uh, Michael Bennett was on my list too. Um, absolutely loved him. Uh, he's definitely, uh, he was a gamer. And he, he, I mean, he was. Uh, he's on Letterman Row now. If you, if you do I some mean, of those shows with them. I just kid uh he was a gamer um big time and then after everything this you know um you know the sadness hell cost us yeah. the 2014 season you know they were close and he ended up uh really taking that to heart and so he he played even more inspired coming down the stretch because of that uh but yeah no love michael bennett uh Kid was a big reason why they won. They were so ended up being so stout on the defensive line coming down the stretch, and big reason why they ended up winning that national title. Yes. Um, so my pick, uh, kind of going off the 2014 team too. Um, so 2013, um, you know, they had a very veteran offensive line, and they plug in this new this freshman uh, right tackle Taylor Decker. Uh, kid played really good as a freshman, and then he had a 2014 had to take over and now on a non-veteran line to be the the rock of the line and didn't start off great for them no. I, mean, I think it started off fine for him but the rest of the line was uh very questionable as we remember that virginia tech game but that dude held that line in place until that line became very veteran coming down the stretch and then i mean go watch wisconsin uh, alabama and oregon again and uh that offensive line kind of hard to you can't uh, tell the difference between the, you see the Virginia Tech game to that that line. That's a line, and that yeah. I mean, when you see how Zeke ran the ball and the protection they gave Cardell, I mean, it's kind of hard to say. I mean, everybody say offensive linemen are uh, unsung heroes, but uh, I mean, you can argue that they're the biggest reason why they won the national title. And yeah. uh, he he was the anchor of that line, and do getting paid i think he just signed, I mean, he maybe, signed a very healthy extension it's, with uh, it's lines I mean, still all right yeah so i mean yeah he's uh he i, I really love decker yeah, yeah first round pick just signed yeah. a big time extension yeah can't go wrong with that great player yeah <clears throat> all right next question so we all know ohio state bia best in america dbu defensive back university Michael, who is the best of DBU from 2012 to the present? 
Um, well, this one, uh, so uh, we haven't got to see what he looks like yet in the NFL. Uh, I'm going with uh, Jeff Okuda. I think uh, we saw last year, um, this was very close between him and Lattimore to me, um, but yeah. they, uh, I saw last year, nobody threw to him. No, and, you, you couldn't <laughs> throw on him. And like, uh, and then that asinine comment at the combine that about like the dude had no penalties. Check the tape. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so uh, he, I mean, the guy is just phenomenal. And I mean, the quarterbacks didn't even test him. When you did test him, he broke it up almost every time. It seemed like he was always there. Yeah. I mean, he, you didn't burn him. You didn't. You didn't outrun him. He didn't have to catch up on you. He always took the best positioning. He uh, knew when to turn at the right moment. I mean, that's so long. I mean, he he knocked away everything. Yeah, he could. He knew how to watch the receiver's eyes. I mean, he knew. I mean, the guy is going to be phenomenal in the NFL. I, I mean, uh, knock on wood, you know. But I mean, he's got the makings to be one of the best cornerbacks in the NFL. Oh, absolutely. He has like multiple All Pro written all over him. I mean, can you honestly think last year, is there any one play that stands out to you that while he was, like, you know, in coverage on someone, someone caught a ball over him? No. I don't even... Like, and that's the problem. Like, you can't even... I can't really... But I can't really pick that out with Damon Arnett from last year either. He was so consistent, though. Like, you can't... It was even, almost boring because they didn't even, throw at him. You can't even think of one, like, great play he did do. Like, right. He had a great... Well, he had two great interceptions against Nebraska. Yeah, and he had a... Uh, he was phenomenal in, uh, against Clemson. Like I just, but that's the thing is like when it's a quarterback that that is that good. It's like because you don't talk about them, that's how you know they're that good because it just gets boring because you're not going to test that guy. You don't throw at him because your guys aren't open. Yeah. All right. All right. So mine, uh, Okuda was obviously a very strong consideration of mine. You could tell by what I just said of him. Marshawn Lattimore, I love the guy. I mean, he was another one that was really, you know, hard to throw against, and he was always there. He made big plays. Uh, I got to go with the one-year wonder, though, the hook, Malik Hooker, that he was all over the field. I mean, he's probably the best uh, ball-hawking free safety I had seen at the collegiate level. I know I watch Ohio State much closer than other schools. That guy reminds me of Ed Reed, though. I mean, I don't. I don't really follow him in the NFL, so I don't know if he's – I know he – I mean, I've seen a couple interceptions he's had, so I don't know if he's still been quite as impressive. But, I mean, that guy was like Ed Reed for Ohio, at Ohio State. He just – he made the plays. He took them back to the end zone. So, I love Malik Hooker. Yeah. Uh, Hooker was definitely on my list. Uh, even though, I mean, like I said, it was between Okuda and Landmore, but I thought about Hooker. I thought about Von Bell. I mean, Von Bell was actually really up on my hyped recruit list uh, just because he was that one that, you know, was right at the end there. I thought about Von Bell, too, and it was crazy because Malik Hooker has six or seven interceptions in 2016, and everyone's like, oh, this is the greatest, you know, safety performance we've seen in so long. Von Bell had six or seven interceptions in 2014. Like, that guy was no slouch. Yeah, no. But, you know, I, I'd go with Malik Hooker, though. Yeah, I, like, love Hooker. Uh, to me, I always call him, he's the, he's my uh, Dwayne Haskins of the defense. If I uh, wish we could have seen more than one year. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, 2017, he would have cleaned up some issues there, too. Yeah. All right. So. All right. So, favorite or best? I think it's going to be favorite, right? Uh, defensive play. Yeah. I mean, best, favorite, third. I mean, it's kind of... It's kind of along the same lines. Yeah. I actually had four to go with here. I was... I was, I got myself loaded for this question in case, you know, I, I wasn't able to go first. So, number one, 2014 Sugar Bowl, Steve Miller. That's my favorite <laughs> defensive play. That was the perfect call. Cut right in front of Amari Cooper, took it to the house. Defensive end, fat man touchdown. You got to love it. Yeah, that was... Uh, he was on my list, too. He's actually on... He's on my list later down in the thing too, but we'll get to that. Um, okay. uh, but he, uh, yeah, that was that was a hell of a play. I love it. I and still, he took it back. I still watch it on YouTube. <laughs> he took it to, to the this house. day. There, there's, there's a day I want to get a nice little smile on my face. I'm like, you know, I'm gonna watch Steve Miller Band uh, take it to the house today. I mean, yes. and then when you talk about uh, that play, when they say how uh, you know they were prepping for it, they were waiting for that play. They knew on a third and short that that uh, when they put Cooper in the slot they go to uh, 
they go to that play, that uh, slant right there for the quick, easy first down. And Fickle had that red all the way. And <laughs> yep. a goodbye. And that's uh, Ohio State. That's really when they took control of that game. Yeah, that kind of felt like when Alabama just – how that game was going – from what Ohio State came back from in that game, and then that helped them go up, I think, two scores, right? That's what put them yeah, up two that was, scores. Yeah, that was the – That kind score. of felt like – I know I know Alabama fought till the end. I mean, that was such a good game. Um, but, yeah, that was, that kind of felt like the dagger. Yeah. All right, so uh, that one's off the list for me. So uh, mine is going back to 2014 also. Um, it's the – Bosa game winning sack against Penn State. That was that was actually number two for me, the walk off sack. So Yeah, uh, yeah go ahead. Yeah, Joey Bosa, he was uh that was just a hell of a play. Not only does he he tackles the, the running back <laughs> and sacks the He sacks it with the lead blocker. Yeah, they he's not sure if that guy took the ball or not, but he's like, you're not blocking me neither, so you know, I'm gonna tackle both of you guys. And uh, I mean Joey's just I mean, he just signed another he signed a big contract. I mean this He's a big time player and he's complete, gonna be for years. Complete uh gamer that guy was. I, I love the Bosa brothers, but you know, I mean I've always been a little bit more I think partial to Joey. Well, I think the thing with Nick, and he was almost on my hype for Kroot list too, was Nick was still, you knew what he was. Yeah. But there was a lot of mystique to Nick because when he was there, you know, like we said, 2017, that was, you know, that was the Rushman. So he had to share a lot of those reps and a lot of the, the spotlight with three other NFL linemen. So very accomplished guys. And then 2018, I mean, the guy was a wrecking ball, but... He didn't make it through a, his third game of the season. Yeah. All right. Oh, hold on. Okay. So, best offensive play. All right. So, I get uh, both choices here. Um, so, the one that I, I – the most recent one in my mind is um, – which I'm not going to go with, but I'm going to just – was last year's Fields touchdown to Wilson against Michigan. Um, I loved that play um, because <laughs> what a gamer! Uh, Fields gets hurt, and it's not that the game is in doubt. It's just that great. <laughs> you just go start thinking back to except there's no Cardell on the bench, uh, right? And so it's like it's like 2014 all over again. I'm like, oh, it's great. We're gonna, here we go again. Play Wisconsin next week. We're yeah. gonna have to deal with a backup quarterback. Yeah, and. Um, at least Cardell was in the program for several years. Uh, but, you know, I, I ended up loving that touchdown. But the one I'm going to take is, you know, after the 2014 loss to Virginia Tech, and you go into 2015 and the revenge game down there in Blacksburg and Braxton Miller's touchdown catch and the spin move. And that is, again, it's another play that I watch all the time on YouTube. Sure. And I love that play. And, uh, Zeke had an unbelievable block on it, and the spin move, the he hit the spin move on the, the Madden controllers, with, and it's just a thing of beauty. And it just, I don't think a lot of, I, I don't know how much Ohio State fans still maybe not appreciate just how much of a great athlete Braxton was. Yeah. So I'm going to give you another obvious one here for my uh, favorite offensive play. Was uh, and this might come up later for favorite touchdown too. But eighty-five yards through the heart of the South, uh, Ezekiel Elliott. Yeah, and that was just that was the capper against Alabama. So what else? What else can you say on that? Um, just guy outran an entire team. It was yeah. amazing. Yeah, it will come up again. Um, <laughs> I'm sure it will. I, I got the even. So uh, I think. Um, Noah Brown, his touchdown against Oklahoma, that was one for me. That was a great play. Uh, Devin Smith had countless offensive plays that, you know, I liked. Um, Braxton, I mean, and that's what you said. You don't think people maybe still appreciate, understand how great of an athlete he was. Do you remember against Penn State? It's only like a three-yard touchdown run. Where he dives. But he's like, he gets stopped three times. Has to change directions three times, and then he dives into the end zone. That was actually... If it was more dramatic, like if it was a further touchdown, that would have been my number one. But um, 
you know, I like the 85 yards that came with Zeke's touchdown. Yeah. So I had to go with that one. All righty. Next one. Um, what's your uh, favorite Ohio State versus the team up north game since 2012? So I have two that really stand out to me. Um, I'm going to give you my honorable mention first. 2012, just that was Urban's first year. Uh, he still, you know, the team was hurting from the year before, and it capped off a perfect season. You know, we had nothing left after that to play for, so... I think after that game happened, you definitely uh, you knew. I mean, you even I mean, you knew you're fine with Urban Meyer, but that just solidified that we are we are back. Trussell Trussell spoiled the Ohio State fans, and so that one loss, even though it was such it was such a bitter year in 2011 to begin with, but that was just the end of the year with losing to Michigan. Um, that 2012 definitely you knew. All right, we're fine again. So my one, and I hope I hope I'm not taking yours here, but. Uh, 2018, the the revenge tour gets derailed. If I, th there was a point of that game that it was a I think two point game, and but yeah, the revenge tour. Ohio State, you know, Dwayne Haskins. It was a completely different offense than what we had before. Don Brown was going to be able to stop that. We weren't because we can't run. We wouldn't be able to move the ball. We kicked their ass. So uh, yeah, that was to me that was my favorite one because people legitimately thought Michigan was going to win that game. I think some people thought they were going to win that game easily, and we just beat the hell out of them. So that one will always stand out to me. Yeah. Um, I actually have both of mine still, so um, I definitely considered 18. But I ended up, and this is my honorable mention, I picked 19 over 18. And the reason why I picked 19 is it's, not wasn't the revenge tour, but anytime you can go up there and uh, kick their ass in Ann Arbor, I will take that any day of the week. Well, there's another one then, and that's the one. <laughs> um, so the one I picked, it was Jim Harbaugh's first year, the savior of Michigan. Here come, here he comes, and um, it comes off a very tough loss. Probably the worst thing that happens to me. The thing, two things killed. Jim Harbaugh's tenure at Michigan against Ohio State. One was the following year in 2016 when they should have beat us and we beat them in overtime. And then the other bad thing that happened to them was Michigan State beat us the week before that game. And Urban Meyer was a man possessed. And they went up into Ann Arbor and they beat the hell out of them. They just, they didn't care. It was close early and then just the brakes came off and it was downhill and they just tore them up. And I remember uh, JT's uh, juke move around uh, Peppers <laughs> yes. for a touchdown. And, <laughs> took him out of his shoes. I mean, I was laughing so hard. I think I cried. I mean, <laughs> I mean that was just. You had such a bad taste in your mouth after the Michigan State thing. I'm like, God, they're gonna. <laughs> this is gonna be like ten year war. Here comes Harbaugh's gonna get his win, and you know, and the team was so shaky to begin with for the whole year offensively. They just had no identity, considering they're coming off the national title. And you think they should have been a well oiled machine, but they just they weren't. And, and like uh, I like I said, I I said that in the beginning with Cardale that, you know, there was just another quarterback coach that came in i think that team could have won another national title yeah um but i love that game that game was that game was special that was and uh, that's harbaugh's for yeah their savior and again we just I torched them. Just, just beat the hell out of them all right favorite moment yeah all right so we're gonna i get to uh I get the pick too, um, so I'm gonna go with my honorable mention because you already brought it up. So I'm gonna go with uh, my the one I probably would have picked, and I would probably still pick, but I'm gonna go honorable mention um, is Steve Miller band. I I mean I just like I said earlier, I love that play, and it's just because you know I'm a big dude, and that's a big dude, and anytime a big dude gets the gets to be the showcase uh that is i mean and the, all that play is meant to be is just to be an interception the dude runs it back he to takes the, it back to the house i mean that's not a linebacker or a uh, safety or a corner stepping in front of a pass that, right 
you know, that's a guaranteed touchdown for those guys normally uh, when they have an open sideline. It's not that's not guaranteed for the linemen. No, no I mean I, I'm pretty sure Blake Sims is faster than Steve Miller. If that if that play is literally maybe I don't know, maybe that, he's not. If it's five yards longer, he don't score. I mean, they get to him. Yeah. And, <laughs> so, uh, but um, my uh, the one I'm going to go with my favorite moment is Zeke's final touchdown against Oregon when uh, they can't cap it off. Nothing special. It's just like a two-yard score. Yeah, it caps it off. We're the national champs at that point, and the game's over. But it's just it was like the exclamation point, you know, to go into that game, and I loved it. And uh, so, yeah, hell yeah. And I still that just the feelings. I'm looking at uh, I'm I'm looking at it right now. We have it hanging up on the wall over here. A picture of it. The Sports Illustrated. Uh, and he's just serious stepping over that guy. That's the game winner. Or not the game winner. That's the the game ender that's the closing closing play and urban fall into the ground when it happens and you know 2014 national champs well i mean I, there i do have one but um i definitely agree with that so favorite moment honorable mention just from a picture standpoint zach boren standing over devin gardner Love that play. <laughs> that's i mean to me, that's what Ohio State football is all about, the rivalry game. So that's my honorable mention. Um, favorite moment, though, honestly, it's not – and this might be cheating, 59 nothing. So that's my favorite moment because we were supposed to lose that game. I'll accept it. We were supposed to lose that game without JT Barrett, that Cardell was going to come in, that – he doesn't know what he's doing, and Wisconsin was going to win that game. It was going to be a good one, but Wisconsin was going to win that game. They didn't score a point on yes. Ohio State. And at that point, Ohio State had to blow them out to even. I mean, what did Urban... they were going to make the na... they weren't going to make the playoff because if if JT is still playing and they win a close game against Wisconsin, Ohio State's in the playoff. But that gave the committee their out. That's well, we. If Cardell shows that if he gives that committee doubt that he cannot lead a dominant team while he's under center, they leave them out of that playoff. And that was a, as dominant of a win. You needed a fifty nine to fifty nine to nothing against. I mean, Wisconsin. how many times do you, you when if you need a fifty nine to nothing win, do you get a fifty nine to nothing? Win right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we needed one in seventeen, and what we what did that end up twenty seven twenty one or something, yeah, something like, that. like that. Yeah. So, I mean, that was. The, and to me, I was just like, holy, even if, I mean, I would have been so mad if we didn't make the playoff, but it was like, holy crap, you know, when we needed to deliver, Urban Meyer got those guys up and they just smoked Wisconsin. Yeah. Alrighty. So we're up to our favorite game. Sugar Bowl. January 1st, 2015, Sugar Bowl. That's all. I mean, that was it was a great game. Alabama, Ohio State was, I mean, actually the next two games, that and Oregon, those games are only close at points because Ohio State just completely makes so many mistakes at the beginning of it. But Ohio State just kept shooting themselves in the foot against Alabama. Alabama took a big 21-6 to lead. Um, and Ohio State, you know, somehow they clawed their way back. I mean, which also a great moment, great, you know, play offensive play evan spencer evan spencer throws a touchdown pass to michael thomas so that was that was definitely my favorite game though um just because you did against alabama you know sec i know we beat arkansas in a game that no longer counts uh that was that's always ohio state's kryptonite though was the sec and now the top sec program ohio state beat them in the first playoff so that's always going to be special to me um, great game by both teams, too. It wasn't like Alabama was completely overmatched. I mean, it was a great game by both teams. Yeah. I always uh, I always kind of consider that. I always say that that is uh, the 1980 uh, Golden... Uh, the Miracle on Ice. Miracle on Ice, because the best game of that is us beating the Soviets, but a lot of people don't realize that that was not for the gold medal. That was for the play in the gold medal game. And, and then, you know, then, and... So that, I mean, that's obviously my top choice. I, I love that game. That thing still just brings shivers <laughs> to my, down me when I think of it. Uh, I'm gonna go with Oregon because you know that was my second choice. I thought of a couple other things in there. I that's where I almost put the 18 Michigan game. Um, you know that was uh, 
just such a phenomenal game. A couple other Michigan games I kind of thought about in there. Uh, the Penn State victories, the two comebacks were both uh, some phenomenal games. Um, oh but, yeah. But I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with uh, Oregon. If there wasn't, I mean, if there wasn't a national title in there, and you didn't have to go through Alabama, I mean, those Penn State games are easy. You, yeah. That's easily one and two. Yeah. Whichever way you want to, you know, slice that. We won the national title, so I'm going with Oregon for the 2014. Uh, still, even after how good Ohio State looked against Alabama and all the things that they had to go through to win the game, and Cardell, there were still people I don't think they could keep up with Oregon. And I'm just like, you know, and I knew going, you know, and to me it wasn't it was an easy game to decide. I knew Ohio State as long as they handled their business, and like you said, that's the only time it got close was when we started making the mistakes. Yeah, we handled our business. We were easily going to beat them because the same blueprint. And Jim Trestle even brings this up prior to that game. The blue, I put the blueprint out there in 2009, and that blueprint stuck all the t all the way up to that point. Yeah. Uh, so, yep, Oregon. I like it. All right, favorite touchdown throughout this time all right so i mean you mentioned it already but i'm still going with it uh because i mean it's the greatest touchdown in my opinion that i've ever witnessed in ohio state history i'll go with my honorable mention first um i did like uh the 2016 uh curtis samuel touchdown against michigan <laughs> so, well that's mine so all right, well, i'm sorry <laughs> i won't say any more on it that um zeke bama uh 85 yards uh, through the heart of the South. Uh, I still remember screaming in the apartment that we were in at the time. Uh, that I mean, it probably woke everybody up in the whole complex. And that uh, uh, that is the my greatest moment. I mean, probably if I think about it, you know, to me that is right up there with C. Grant's uh, the the sack in O2. Yeah, that's. I mean, that is just like. That just to be witnessing that in front of you and you know i mean this game started off i mean even ohio state statistically is dominating the game and but alabama's kicking their butt early because of the mistakes and then ohio state starts bouncing back and then you get the evan spencer touchdown and then it's just back and forth and you're up by two scores and it's one score and then z just right through them and it's just, and then, and Spencer's block on that to open it up. I mean, it's the greatest block in Ohio State football history. Yeah. In my opinion. And I'm, I'm I didn't watch blocks. I didn't get to see the holes that Archie Griffin got to run through. I got to watch that block. And, and that might even be more impressive maybe than the run. I mean, that's just the, how wide open that ends up. I mean, that opens the whole play and then Zeke's gone. And when he breaks it, you know he ain't. I mean, he got run down in the first quarter. He wasn't getting run down that one. So that's what I went with. All right. So mine, I'll go honorable mention. Um, oh, it's KJ Hill in 2018 against Penn State, right? Yeah. That screen that. Yeah. That, that's the go ahead, correct? Mm -hmm. All right. So that one, I mean, just the play itself was great. Uh, Terry McLaurin blocked three three people on that play so if you know we're talking about great blocks evan spencer's one was more impactful than that but he blocked three guys on one play so sprung that touchdown so that one always stands out to me of course i, I kind of stepped in front of you there and said that was my but uh 2016 curtis samuels walk off touchdown against michigan that one's always going to be special to me because you know you had the harbaugh after the game you know they beat us by this much um but that's yeah that's that one was cool because you had that big play right beforehand that you thought oh man we might lose this game on this play and then i think it's the next play yeah. and he gets the walk-off touchdown so yeah that was that one was really cool and it's always especially to beat your rival win the game like that that was awesome so that's yeah. my favorite i love that uh i love that touchdown i it's another touchdown that's a youtube touchdown i I watch it every now and then that's just like because it's just like I and you know I said earlier there's two things that uh have really affected the Harbaugh era and just Michigan's never been the same in this rivalries you know I mean they haven't been the same for a long time but uh the Harbaugh era is that's the two things that getting destroyed in 15 and then you know when they should have very easily won that game in 16 I mean 
I think JT just got sacked again. Um, you know. Oh, <laughs> <Right. laughs> uh, that was a that was a rough end of that year, man. Yeah. Man. So, um, Prince, um, I never had any hard feelings against the guy, but <laughs> sixteen there was points he was like a revolving door. Yeah. Alrighty, so uh, those are the twelve uh, questions back and forth. Um, so we got two more. Um, these are kind of open-ended little discussion. Um, it won't be horribly long discussion, but just to kind of throw out an opinion. So the first one is Urban Meyer versus Ryan Day. I feel like these next questions, because they're so hard to answer, that I might end up being a little contradictory of myself at different points, so I do apologize. Uh, I'm going to go with Urban Meyer, though, just because of the body of work. So I think Urban Meyer, he gets too much scrutiny for couple bad hires for assistant coaches um urban meyer is really one of the guys that kind of put the blueprint that you know you can't just be a great head coach you need to have great coaches all around your staff so he his success to fail rate on that is so much greater than you know having a successful coach as opposed to a, a bad assistant coach so i have to you know, I have to preface it with that. Now, things that like Ryan Day, you know, Zach Smith, Brian Hartline. Brian Hartline's a better assistant coach. So that's where I'm saying I might be a little contradictory of myself. Uh, I think Ryan Day is a great coach, and he's going to be a great coach for as long as he stays at Ohio State. Urban gave him, you know, a loaded or a full cupboard, though, to work with. So Urban's the one that set all that up. And, I mean, or three national titles so let's say he's a great recruiter he's a rock star it seems like day is gonna be just as good but right now even after that one year with day if you had to say who do you want coaching your team if you could choose one i would say urban meyer yeah um the reason why i put this in here is because there's some recency bias out there and i've seen some people on twitter say that um you know, Urban Meyer or Ryan Day is better than Urban Meyer. And it's kind of like how... You're crazy. Yeah, it's kind of like how people say, even though Meyer Trussell is a different conversation, but I've seen a lot of people when Meyer was hired that, you know, start talking about... It's like the guy that came before you always was not as good as the new guy. And yeah. So... And I think some people kind of forget how, how good the previous guy really was. And so, until, the, until the new guy might have like a couple hiccups in the season. Then yeah. It's like, we want that old guy back. Yeah. Um, so I'm going with Urban, too, on this one. Um, I mean, the dude's a winner. I mean, I think he's still the top. Uh, I mean, I know he's not it's coaching. Top, it's top three. Yeah, I mean, he was. I know he's not coaching right now. But, I mean, he was the high, most winning, highest winning percentage head coach. Uh, it's over 900. I mean, that's crazy. And the dude didn't have a, uh, I mean, you can say what you want about Bowling Green. That's still an FBS program. And, you know, I mean, he has never had a losing season. He only coached FBS programs. And he had that type of winning percentage. And two of them are in legitimate powerhouse schools. You know, Florida plays in the SEC. Ohio State in the Big Ten. I mean. They won national titles of both. Yeah, and you can't, I mean, you can say what you want about the Big Ten. It's still not that, I mean, which. Other years you've proved it. It's not that easy necessarily to win always some of those games, and especially when you're the best team, you're the team that everybody wants to knock off. So I mean, Urban, I mean, they, they were always, for the most part, they were always ready. Um, there's a, a couple things that come out. Um, obviously, are you know, the Iowa and Purdue games. Uh, those are were kind of blemishes against them. Urban always had a. Urban always could hire great assistant coaches to start. He had the same issue at Ohio State as he ended up at Florida, replacing great uh, assistant coaches. Yeah. Uh, we'll see how Day does with that. I mean, that's not always – It's maybe sometimes it's easier to find the first batch than it is, to, uh, you know. I, uh, I think there was times, Urban, and this is speculative, so I don't know. I know as much about the guy as, you know, the next normal person. But, well, next obsessed with Ohio State person. I know the guy worked – tirelessly endlessly he was a perfectionist he wanted the best team out there i think sometimes when urban got himself set up though he thought you know the train could not be derailed that he had enough confidence in himself that i don't need to make 
a huge splash higher right now because we're in such a good place in the room that I have so much talent coming back that I can kind of navigate this one until this new coach is ready to go somewhere else. So I think he had a little bit of issues with that sometimes, but I just, I can't take away 20 years of dominance for one year. I mean, Ryan Day is going to be a great coach, but he's not, he's not on the same page as Urban Meyer right now. They're not in the same book right now. The one place where I really gave Day probably a big boost is that I think Urban, Urban knows he recruits good. He knows he has great players. He knows that they work incredibly hard up to the game. So Urban, Urban kind of rests on that, that, you know, I'm going to recruit great players. I'm going to work the hell out of them leading up to the game. They're going to be prepared as hell. And then my dudes are just going to beat your dudes on the football yeah. field. I think Ryan Day comes at a much more, uh, a much more mental approach that this is what they do bad. So this is what we're going to do to play on the comes in much more strategically against teams. So I think, I mean, but that's a coach. And, you know, I think it's just two different mindsets. One's, one's a head coach where it's like I can, I'm my 11 guys can beat your 11 guys. And if I take your 11 guys, I can beat my 11 guys. Like, yeah. it's just, that's always been kind of like Urban's mindset. And I think Dave just has a, and I like, I think I, I like that a little bit more from Dave, but. Uh, Seems like he approaches it a little bit more strategically. Yeah, that, um. And, I can respect that. And I think we saw that last year is even when it didn't matter if you're playing the Indianas in the world day. I mean, like Urban's point and, you know, Indiana gave us some tough games at different times. I mean, Urban's point was that <laughs> we're Ohio State and they're Indiana. Like, going, yeah. I think Day understands that, too. But his point is that, you know, well, their quarterback, he makes this. So let's go after him on this or hey, this cornerback bites on these type of plays. So let's let's use that to our advantage right. so that let's find the right pieces to go up against their weaknesses and you know use our strengths to go against their weaknesses so i just think that's kind of like and they i mean it couldn't have been stated more throughout the year but he definitely you know he simplified the defense to the point where it would just be running the fastest and using its um advantages compared to what they were going against from different competition whereas Bill Davis and Greg Schiano sometimes, I think they just confuse guys out there that they wanted to run a NFL scheme and it just wasn't something that the players were comfortable with or it just wasn't working, but they weren't making adjustments to it. So um, Urban definitely, like I said, I'm going to contradict myself sometimes on this, but I still, you, you can't go against history on this one. I got to go with Urban. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it might be different in a couple years. Ryan Day still has a few more years. He has to prove himself in that matter. Uh, but all right, next question. Lat or you wanna you wanna take it? Yeah, I'll read it off. Would the twenty nineteen final version beat the twenty fourteen national champion final version? One game, one bowl game. Yeah. So like we said, this is the final version. So this is the Ohio State Buckeye team that lined up against Clemson last year against the Ohio State Buckeye team with Cardell Jones win the national title. Um, there's kind of two ways to look at this. Um, did we say could have or would have? Would. Okay. Could they have beat them? Yeah, they could have beat them. Would they have beat them? No. Um, reason why I say that is this, that team won the national title. <laughs> that team at the end of the day, nobody was beating that team. And, uh, I, I don't think last year's team, I, I think that last year's team, Maybe if they would have won the national title or beat Clemson, I would have a little harder thing to say on this one. The, the team has the horses to beat the 2014 team, just like the 2014 team had the horses to beat last year's team. Um, it was just, I don't know. I just, I don't think they would have. I think if uh, if you lined them up, like, like I said, they could have. I think if you lined them up 10 times, I think. Seven or eight times the 2014 wins that game. I mean, that's the team that was not going to be denied at the end of the day. Yeah, it's that's a hard one for me. Um, you can't. It's so hard to go against a national champion. My thing is though, the one thing that Ohio State has always done, and this is not specific to last year, but. Um, I mean, 99% of the time for 
this and this goes as long as I can probably remember is Ohio State shut down great running backs. So they yeah. go up against some big running back and the guy ends up with 40 yards. I mean, I you you can go back how long for that? Yeah. That's not that's not specific to Urban Meyer, Ryan Day, Jim Trestle did that, John Cooper's teams did that. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at. That is just I don't know Zeke runs for over 100 yards. And I don't know. I don't. I mean, he's so good. So that's where I'm having trouble with this because Cardell Jones, he, you're not throwing touchdowns to Devin Smith over Jeff Okuda. Yeah. You're not. Unless you throw him up. I don't know. Devin might be able to go up with Yeah, him. he might be able to out jump him. I don't know. I mean, Devin made plays that you just no one could cover him. So that that's fair. Um, Justin, I think he could have some success throwing against the safeties on 2014, but the corners, they weren't slouches either. No. I don't know. J.K., I mean, again, J.K. JK is not running that much against the 2014 defense. And I think. I think Zeke probably has a better chance to get to 100 than J.K. does. Even though the 2014 defense coming, because they had a different defensive state, ran the quarters defense. So coming down the stretch, you know, those last couple of games a year, they actually gave up rushing yards. I mean, you think about Michigan State had rushing yards against them. Uh, Indiana had rushing yards against them. Yeah. Minnesota did. Um, Nebraska did when they ran the, the 1980s playbook. Yeah. Um, so... I'm having a lot of, like, this one was really hard for me to come up with an answer because I just, how they match up. I mean, I guess Joey Bosa or Chase Young, who has the weakness at left tackle? Yeah. Who had the better defensive line? I think they're very comparable. Who had the better linebackers? Probably 14. So I would say uh, 19 probably had the better overall secondary. 14 probably had the better linebackers. I would almost say a wash with the defensive line. Offensive line, I would almost say a wash. Quarterbacks, I got to give it to Justin over Cardale. Even though I said Cardale, my favorite quarterback. Um, and I got to give it to Zeke. Receivers, that I don't know because Devin Smith and Michael Thomas were two really good receivers. Yeah. Tight ends, probably you got to give it to 14. Hireman and Vanette. Um, I would say, though, because you got Urban Meyer on your sideline. Tom Herman is no slouch of an offensive mind, so he's still your offensive coordinator. He's still prepping for Jeff Halfley. Jeff Halfley is a great defensive mind, though. He's prepping for Tom Herman. I think it'd be a hell of a game, but I can't go against the national champion, so I got to go with 2014. Yeah. To me, um, it just, it, and maybe this is the most simplifying version to look at it. Um, Ohio State played Clemson last year. Alabama in 2014 was the Clemson of uh, this thing. Uh, so. Yeah. Ohio State beat Alabama, and they lost to Clemson. They shouldn't have lost to Clemson, but they did. Um, so, yeah, I'm good. I'm good with that. I mean, I mean, like I think it would be a good game. I think 2019 way. easily could beat at different times. 2014, I just I don't think. At the end of the day, I just think 2014's heart that that's where it ended. That's they they, they just weren't going to lose, and I think that proved it. And I think I mean you got to look again. You got to go to the question before. Look at your experience on your head coaches. I just think Urban's more he's more well equipped, well suited to be coaching in that situation. So I have to give him the nod on that one. I'm I think it would have been a hell of a game. Uh, they match up you know well against both each or both teams match up good against the other one, but I think. 2014, you can't bet against a national champion. So, so that's our our special edition uh, Labor Day weekend uh, Buckeye should have been playing show. We thought this was going to run 20 minutes, so, yeah, so uh, <laughs> here we go. Uh, but uh, we uh, we appreciate everybody uh, going to watch this video. Um, just remember to subscribe to the YouTube page and uh, like it, comment on the page, give us your answers. Uh, uh, whether it's on YouTube or Facebook, yeah. Or who's whatever. your favorite quarter? I mean, we would really want to. We want to hear some of your guys' responses to some of this stuff. So, thank you for joining us. Um, look out for, uh, and then look out. Episode four should be coming uh, over the next couple of days. So, uh, appreciate it. And have a good day. Thanks, guys. Bye.